Can we start now? Check, check. Okay. okay. It's working. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks to you. Um, thank you very much, first of all, for deciding to share the next 30 to 40 minutes with us and choosing to, to hear about our topic. And also thanks for the organizers committee for choosing the topic to be included in the program. Uh, so we wanted to share our experience about how a company that actually doesn't sound like a good candidate for investing in and doing um, dedicated software development for an open source project actually managed to do it. Uh, we very much like this project uh, and how we did it, so we are eager to share how we managed to do it and maybe um, inspire and convince other, other colleagues in other companies to try to go this way. So our plan for the, um, the day is to do an intro, which we're doing now, and uh, then um, come come a little bit more in detail about why we want to discuss this topic, why we think it's uh, important, then share our story. The focus is to give you first-hand experience and what worked with us. And uh, after that, uh, try, we, we, we have tried to summarize a list of, uh, uh, let's say, ideas and um, um, guidelines that worked for us and that might uh, work for you so that you, uh, we ca you can use it as a, um, as a starter if you decide to go this way. So continuing forward, uh, first an introduction about us. I'm here with uh, my colleague Mitko, so he will introduce himself. Yes, actually Mitko is my, my nickname in Bulgarian. Uh, my real name is Dimitar Ivanov. I'm working currently into the Kivicom project uh, the smart home platform of Deutsche Telekom. But in the meantime, while I'm having some spare time, I'm advising a team of open source developers in our company. And actually, this is the team that we are going to speak about. Yes. And also, because he didn't get into much details about himself, Mitko is uh, uh, one of the colleagues that in the past led our R&D teams and R&D initiatives. Uh, he got uh, awards from the president of Bulgaria for different research stuff that he did. So it's a real pleasure to be here today with him and also in general to be working on this. My name is Jan Dimitrov. Uh, I'm also, of course, from Musala Soft. And uh, I consider myself as a combination between business and IT guy. I started as a developer and uh, like 20 years ago and ever since have been in the software development industry. Uh, at Musala, at the moment, I combine uh, the responsibilities for caring about the success of our strategic clients, clients like uh, Deutsche Telekom, Commerzbank, T-Systems, uh, Visa, such uh, big multinationals, and also um, I am responsible for the business development or the business part, the sales part. So actually quite a lot of the things that you will hear today maybe will sound uh, too business, but actually, this is how you can convince your uh, management potentially to invest in such a project. So, uh, why discuss this? Um, first of all, the, the core topic open source is a good thing and there is obviously no need to explain why it is a good thing, especially on this uh, stage. Uh, but on the other side, um, dedicated in-house software development initiatives uh, for open source uh, projects is something that is not uh, happening that often. It's actually a rare thing to, to see. And this is especially true in service companies. So service companies that are um, delivering services that are not related to specific products um, or specific platforms. Um, they don't uh, have the reasoning to, to actually um, invest uh, in, in such initiatives. So what, what are the, the usual suspects, uh, company profiles that usually invest a lot in um, dedicated development for open source projects? So one kind are the companies that uh, 
have uh, business, their business or part of their business focused around uh, open source uh, products. So companies like Red Hat, IBM, HP, and many others. Uh, so they have a clear um, reasoning for, for doing this. Also, big companies uh, like uh, Facebook, Google, Twitter, Salesforce, of this kind that do a lot of software development. Um, their case is that they usually decide that pieces of the software or um, big s systems that uh, are not directly related to their core business, they decide to open source them. Um, the third type that we've listed here are ones that are heavily using or relying on um, software uh, uh, on open source uh, uh, products. So those are companies that uh, either use extensively or build products on top of uh, open source platforms. And uh, those are usually companies that are also backing the foundations behind those, uh, with the, uh, behind those projects. And their idea, of course, is to participate in the direction of how the, uh, those, uh, those projects evolve. Of course, non-profit uh, focused on open source product, product, projects like um, um, the, the foundations, including and, uh, Eclipse Foundation, the, the Alliance Foundation. So, of course, there's not that much software development in those non-profits specifically, but in general, it's also a kind of uh, usual suspect for some things related around dedicated development for open source. And lastly, academic projects that are publicly funded, funded and uh, most of the times they, they publish the results of what they do as uh, open source. So why are we discussing this? Uh, we are discussing this because what actually happens if you or your company doesn't fit in any of those kinds? Um, what, what can be done so that you anyway find a sustainable plan and sustainable way to uh, have dedicated development for uh, an open source initiative. We are a big crowd here. <laughs> uh, we gave you an idea about who we are. It would be interesting to understand who, uh, who you are a little bit. So I'll skip the first one, which is uh, what types of companies you work for. But, uh, let, let's just quickly go through the second question. Do you have in your companies um, dedicated open source initiatives? And please raise your hand if the answer is yes, and also your company comes to one of those usual suspects that we listed. Okay, um, okay, thank you. Now, if the answer is yes, you have open source initiatives, uh, but your company doesn't fit into any of the usual suspects, please raise your hand. Great. Two people. So basically the, uh, the ratio is uh, um, significant and it shows why, why this, topic's, this topic is uh, actually interesting. So we go to our story and we'll give you the... Um, the, the, the information about how, how we started. Uh, first, we will profile our company because it's important to understand from where um, and how we fitted the, the plan for the open source initiative. So within 30 seconds, we are a software development company, around 500 people at the moment. Our core strategic um, Areas for software development are cloud integration and API management, artificial intelligence and big data uh, analytics, IoT, smart home, and industry 4.0. Those are the areas where the company um, is uh, growing, uh, has significant part of their business, of our business, and is investing in um, the future growth. A broad portfolio of, uh, of uh, technologies covered, but nevertheless, uh, the Java practice is the biggest one, followed by .NET, many others. In terms of where we, uh, where our clients uh, come from, uh, it's predominantly North America and European Union, with a big focus on Germany. And the types of businesses that we serve, telecoms um, is the, the top uh, vertical business, uh, banking and finance, and uh, 
automotive and the public sector. So on the right, you see some of the, some of the clients that we've been doing uh, business for, for years. So those, this was what we are. So what we are not, we are not, uh, we are not selling products. We are not selling uh, solutions. Uh, there is no single platform or tool that we that intensively use that we are somehow dependent dependent on, be it open source or not open source. Uh, and we are not providing services around open source products like we sell or we, we sell um, subscri resell subscriptions and provide uh, maintenance or something like this. We are not doing this, and we are not a big company like like uh, the ones that I mentioned. So in short, we are not one of the usual suspects for having a dedicated open source development team. So what happened? Uh, it, all, it all happened in the context of the um, smart home project that we do for Deutsche Telekom. Uh, the the QCOM platform, we've been doing uh, um, development and testing services there for, for years now. Um, and. Uh, Smart home and IoT is an area where, as you saw in this slide that I showed about the company, is one of our uh, focus areas. Uh, we've been doing uh, projects with IoT also for companies like IBM, uh, also for quite quite many years. So it is a strategic um, area, and also we are a company that invests quite significantly in people by hiring. Uh, entry level and uh, not that much experience uh, um, colleagues. So this all combined came uh, with the idea of our colleague Martin Momov, uh, who you see on the picture. He's my colleague with whom together we are responsible for uh, the, on our side for the, the, the QVCOM project at the company. So he came up with the idea to create an open source team that will be working dedicatedly full time on uh, one project. Uh, actually to work uh, and uh, contribute to OpenHub and Eclipse, Eclipse Smart Home. So, now on the left side you see the, the information that I already provided you uh, in the beginning as, uh, as a high-level overview of our company. And in the, in the, the red light, uh, the yellow highlighted uh, letters, you see actually how this idea touch the strategic goals of the company. So it is a project that is um, around IoT and smart home, which as I told you, uh, is within the strategic goals of our company. Um, it is mainly with uh, Java development and uh, it has a strong community in uh, Europe uh, and also in Germany. Um, IoT in general is something that is very, very, um, let's say common in current projects that we see in telecoms and automotive. So those are, let's say, the touch points that we had of this potential uh, open source project that we can start to contribute mapped to the strategic goals of our company. And in addition, we, we were in a situation where we want to grow in smart home and uh, IoT in, in general. On the other hand, we had a significantly uh, big project for our company by this time, which was a uh, year and a half ago, um, that uh, had the potential for scaling, and uh, on the other hand, used specific uh, technologies and specific things that you need to be aware of so that you can contribute effectively, like, uh, for example, OSGI, um, the, the whole, um, let's say, mindset for working with uh, IoT and devices. Uh, so we also, as I said, had the need to uh, train both not experienced people, junior developers, and also experienced but not in the area that would fit for those potential projects or expansion of projects. On top of this, you have the employer brand and image that can be um, supported and improved by getting into such an initiative and uh, also we thought that it might provide uh, new business opportunities. So he shared the idea. I personally loved it, and we joined, and together came up with a plan and discussed it with, um, with uh, our management, and convinced them that it makes sense to try. So what we did is we made sure that we align this plan and our project with the strategic direction. 
I told you regarding IoT, smart home, EU and Germany. So it fits in the strategic area of our company. On the other hand, um, it is clearly an enabler for professional development and effective professional development, both for experienced and not that experienced people in a technology area that we, we wanted to and we continually want to grow our capacity. Um, I believe that you all have experience of uh, onboarding less experienced people, so there are different things that you can, um, you can do. You can put them on synthetic training plan, training paths that they read, do, do sample projects, synthetic tasks, etc. So this is one way you can put them as addition to commercial projects where when you have deadlines and stress, etc. Actually, sometimes uh, there might be significant time that passes and uh, it, uh, these people do, don't get uh, uh, enough attention. So. Um, this was actually a really uh, good candidate for providing effective professional development of uh, such, such colleagues. Um, on the other hand, we said we'll add one more project in our portfolio of an area where we want to expand, so IoT and smart home. So it is a real project because as Mitko will just say in a minute, uh, it, was, it is managed as a normal project, the way that uh, we do others, and it has real and uh, tangible results. Uh, also, we said we want to start small. We don't want to invest too much uh, money because at the end it's all about the money. So it's uh, um, about the company spending money on something that would not provide immediate results, but in the long run will prove potentially to be um, uh, positive, uh, with a positive impact on, on the company in many, different, uh, in many different directions. So we said we want to, sm to start smart, uh, to start small, uh, and mostly with less experienced colleague. And we don't want to agree now that we do it in the next two years. We said, just let's try it for six months, see how it goes. It's not that big a risk uh, for, for a company like ours. So just let's see, it kind of makes sense, let's try. Um, we've put on the table again, the, uh, as I said, the, um, the benefits that will come from the employer branding. Uh, I believe in Germany the situation is like this, in Bulgaria it's like this, everywhere it's like this. So every company is striving to uh, attract uh, candidates for their uh, software development positions. It's, it's hard to find uh, good people. So anything that could differentiate you uh, from, from other companies and something that will attract potential candidates is uh, extremely important now. And a company that does also software develop, um, open source uh, contribution with dedicated team, it's something that every developer would like. Um, and yes, last but not least, we also said yes, and this will be an enabler for potential new business. On one hand, it will, it will allow us to, to grow easier with existing customers. On the other hand, it will allow us to get contacts with different, um, with different uh, um, companies, contributors from different countries. It will allow us to, to get some exposure on different events and things like this. So most probably, we uh, would also uh, have potential for a new business. Also, the platform that we are contributing to, OpenHub, actually has uh, the potential and is realizing it for uh, companies to build uh, solutions uh, on top of it. So those companies at some point might need an implementation team that knows uh, the, the platform well. We would be one of the uh, candidates if uh, such a thing happens. So we've put this on the table, but very lightly. So we didn't want to put this as uh, something that will be a go, no go decision after six months because it is not something that you can rely on in the beginning. And we convinced our management and we started. And my colleague Mitko now will give you some specifics to feel so, yep. so that you feel that it's real. I'm going to give you mo some more specifics about the work of the team and actually how we started in the beginning and how in the progress of the project uh, it evolved into a, a team of developers, not only one developer. So in the beginning, in April 
2016, we started with one junior developer, and uh, the goal there was uh, for this junior developer to gain some more knowledge about, uh, about the platforms that we were using in our commercial project, and especially for Eclipse Smart Home and Open Hub. So in order for this junior developer to be focused on the correct things, uh, actually we, uh, we wanted one senior developer on a part-time to mentor him. Actually, this was the technical trainer of our company and he was uh, very experienced in training people into different projects and technologies. In the beginning, we decided uh, uh, to start with uh, some forgotten tasks into the, the tracking systems and uh, the forums uh, of the projects in order uh, not to rush the developer to um, to do stuff under pressure and just to learn. So we started with some, uh, with fixing some small UI issues that everybody uh, was annoyed about, but nobody wanted to fix them. And also we decided to uh, fix some small bugs that uh, can help us gain more knowledge about the platforms. After that, we found out that uh, we can join some more developers on board and actually two more junior developers joined the team. As the team was growing, we decided to, uh, to create our own training materials about, uh, about the technologies that were, uh, that were used, uh, for example, OSGI, and uh, actually uh, we thought of, we are going to build an open source team, why not open source all this documentation? And actually this was the right, the right moment for us because at this moment uh, the documentation of OpenHub was building up and we started developing these tutorials that were previously in our internal wikis of for, for the whole open source community. At the end, we've prepared several, several pages with tutorials that can help the developers to know what are the, the basic um, the basic steps in order to get introduced to OSGI and to start contributing to the project. And when we gained this, uh, um, this knowledge for the team members, we also decided that we can start testing some of the components of the system that were not yet tested. So the developers started, uh, started writing unit tests and by covering the some of the core components of the, of the platforms, we also found out that uh, we are gaining a lot of knowledge because of course the tests were not uh, running smoothly. Beside that, we also started uh, working on one, uh, one task that was discussed uh, into, into the forums of the community and everybody had decided that it's uh, a great idea to um, to migrate all the HTTP clients that we're using, actually there were several HTTP clients used into the platforms, to one single, uh, actually Jetty, and actually everybody uh, had the consensus about that, but nobody started, uh, had started working on that yet. So we took this task, and actually our team of three junior developers managed to do uh, this migration for a month. Just to give you an idea that we're already late. Sorry? We're a bit late already, okay. significantly. <laughs> yep. So actually how, uh, how the team is working, uh, currently, currently we have four junior developers and one mid-level developer into our open source team, and of course the senior developer that is still mentoring them and focusing them on the, the important tasks. How we started actually with building up the team, we started doing some service integrations into the, the platform. I'll show later some examples. We also decided to integrate some real devices from scratch in order to do the, the work more interesting for the developers. And uh, we also contributed to uh, Eclipse Smart Home and Open Hub with one tooling that was integrating three different tools for static code analysis in order to facilitate the, the process of reviewing incoming pull requests and, uh, and in order to um, make, make the developers to stick to the coding guidelines. We are still continuing to expand the unit test coverage because you know that in each system there is always more code that have to be tested. And of course, as we are building the team and it's expanding, 
we are uh, upgrading the documentation and the tutorials because the newcomers are usually having some uh, some notes about uh, about the usability of the tutorials. And uh, as we said, the the team is. Uh, is using uh, an internal process that is not much different than the process that is followed in a uh, in a standard commercial project. And uh, we are having our internal system for tracking the issues. We are also making internal code reviews with the mentor of the developers in order to contribute good-looking code to uh, to the public repositories. We are also doing pair programming and uh, applying at all good practices. So yeah, this is our open source team. As you can see, most of them are very young, they are very motivated, and actually the main motivation come, uh, comes from that, that they are contributing to a real project and not just uh, solving some training tasks and uh, actually learning new technology. This is actually including alumni of the team? Yes, and it's not uh, of... Uh, and it's from the, the technology conference that we organize in Sofia and Skopje. It's like two weeks ago, the, the first. Okay. So yeah, as Janju mentioned, we wanted to, to show you why it's really a win-win-win situation. Why it's a win situation for the community, for the team, and for the company. So let's start with the benefits for the community. As, as I already said, we contributed a good-looking documentation that actually all our newcomers are using now to get on board in our project. As I said, we also uh, implemented two integrations of uh, services into, into the smart home platforms. On the left, you can see our uh, RSS binding to Eclipse Smart Home, which is uh, uh, giving the user the ability to show some information from an RSS feed and probably visualize it somehow. And on the other hand, we contributed a very small binding for Eclipse Smart Home, which is providing some information for the local machine of the developer, which could be helpful sometimes. As I said, we've integrated uh, several real devices. Actually, they are not popular, and, and that's why they, they were not integrated yet into the platform. Because are... OpenHub is a great project. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you, can, uh, you, you, you hardly find something to do with real devices for it. We were looking specifically. Yep. Great. So we've made a research which devices are not yet integrated, and we found out that there is a a small company in England that is uh, developing a gateway with several surrounding devices. And we bought one gateway and uh, three different devices, one motion detector, one, uh, one smart plug, and uh, one er energy meter in order to integrate them directly to OpenHub from scratch. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, this is an example of something that we wanted to do anyway tied to our business goals. Our business goals is that we want to build knowledge about different types of things around uh, IoT projects, including binding of devices. So, like we spent two months maybe deciding, uh, finding the, what, what we can do, what we can buy and do, but at the end we did it. Yep. So some more details about the tooling. Uh, as we started contributing to the project, we also had uh, talks with uh, with the community members and the, the committers, and uh, they have identified the problem that uh, actually on all the incoming pull requests there are some redundant errors and uh, that the developers make. Uh, the code is not uh, stick to the coding guidelines, and actually this was slowing down the contribution process because uh, the same review comments uh, should, uh, should, be, uh, should be left uh, on the incoming pull requests again and again. So the solution that we also discussed with the community first was to integrate uh, three different uh, static code analysis tools, Findbox, Checkstyle, and PMD, and uh, to, provide, um, to provide a way to implement some custom checks that will be specific for the project and specific for the coding guidelines that we want to follow. So at the end, we've managed to implement that, and we are still developing that. 
and uh, we uh, so far we have 26 custom uh, custom checks that are that are tracking the new the incoming pull requests and uh, all these checks are integrated into the builds of OpenHub and Eclipse Smart Home and if you submit a pull request to the project that is not following the coding guidelines these tools will notify you about the problems that uh, that is identified in your code and the basic value is that the manual work that is done during code reviews is decreased significantly because of this redundant thing now being done automatically. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so yes, some of the, um, so these checks are with different severity, so the developers know which one are critical and their requests will not be merged if, uh, if these, uh, these uh, issues are not fixed. So yeah, as a summary, these are, uh, these are our progress with the open source team so far. As you can see, we have a lot of merged pull requests and uh, several bugs were identified during the unit tested and also fixed. And of course, we are constantly having a discussion with the community about uh, the things that we have to improve. Just as a small slide here, we, uh, we ask the developers to make a screenshots of the uh, good feedback that they are receiving on the community, the things that they are proud of. And here you can see several examples of, of positive comments that our developers have received on the community. And get their motivated pull requests. much, yes. Mm -hmm. So we can continue why it's a win situation for the team, uh, even though it's uh, a bit obvious. As you can see, this is, uh, this is actually, these are all the people that were in the team and that are currently in the team, actually a lot of developers. We ask them three simple questions in order to see how they are feeling into the project. So the first question was uh, how they feel about being uh, part of uh, an open source team. And actually you can see that they are very, that they think that this is the best place there that they can start. They are very motivated to work on such project. And of course they, they appreciate that this, this helped them to develop as programmers. We've also wanted them to, to share what are the skills that have gained. And as you can see that, uh, that are the skills that are usually gained when you are working in, in an open source project to write clean code, uh, to, uh, to see how a big project is working and to see how it's structured. And of course, to reduce the, reduce the amount of work by splitting it into smaller pieces to test your code and of course to learn new concepts and technologies. The third thing about uh, their, uh, their feeling into the project was about the most, most exciting part that actually uh, they have seen and they have felt. So as you can see, the most exciting part of course is to work with real devices and to be part of the community where you can receive a lot of uh, sometimes positive, sometimes uh, uh, constructive comments about your code and actually to develop yourself. So we okay, will so cover. Here I go for the mm -hmm. rushing, rushing till the end. Oh, yeah. So the last part is uh, last part of this one is uh, why it actually proved to be a success and a win situation for the company. It's at the end, but it's the most important for the topic that we're discussing because it is let's say the driver that can be used to convince uh, the, the companies like ours to invest in such a thing. So for professional development of people, it is obviously a full success. All the alumni people that you saw that went through those projects and were junior guys, like within very few months, they continued in commercial projects and they are successful and uh, um, proved to be people with the right attitude to, for writing clean code, so with a professional attitude to tasks, etc. So um, I don't agree that uh, open source is, uh, because you said those are the things that you usually find in an open source project. I think that not every open source project is, but we had the luck to find specifically OpenHub and the, um, the community there and the attitude of the um, leader and the, um, let's say, the leading developers and the people that care about quality 
that actually uh, impose uh, those uh, good practices. So in terms of professional development, it is more effective and it's, it is 100% success. In terms of uh, the company's employer brand and image, we get extended uh, external exposure via conferences, events, discussions that uh, mention what we did. Uh, internally, the initiative is very much appreciated, so everybody in the company that, uh, that knows what we're doing uh, likes this, and this helps motivate the people in the whole company that we're doing something like this. Uh, and uh, yes, the last one, highly motivated team members, uh, it's, it's, I be believe, uh, needless to say. Uh, on the business side, that I said that we didn't stress, uh, intentionally we didn't stress, uh, but we worked on it, actually also provided results. So we had two direct project opportunities related to what we are doing for OpenHub. And uh, one of them we realized. So we contracted a new project and started uh, uh, some time ago. Um, and uh, it has very, very good potential. The other one didn't, didn't happen. So it's not like somebody else got it or something like this. It just didn't happen. We had three indirect project opportunities around this, not directly from what we're doing, but very much related. And we, we got confirmation um, like a couple of weeks ago for one of those. We're about to contract it and start it in December. Uh, and we have one more which is still in discussion. So on the business side, after a year and a half, um, of course, this doesn't happen like this. Uh, but if, uh, if you follow up, if you work on, on this, uh, it also provides business results. Great appreciation about the initiative from existing customers. Everybody from our customers, when, when we talk and when they understand somehow that we do something like this, appreciate it much and uh, we gain our, we, we grow our image as a responsible company. Um, broadened expertise in the strategic areas that we mentioned was also achieved, which provides us potential for other business and also extended exposure, business development, and networking opportunities on places like this, on other events, uh, which connects us with, with people that, because we chose a project that is in our, let's say, uh, strategic goals, connects us exactly with people that are around this. They might not be businessmen or decision makers or something like this, but it makes sense. This is how we start to network. And this is something that would speak to your management also. So in general, for us, the answer is yes. So it is a win-win-win situation for, um, for everybody. So how to try this with your company? Uh, because we are out of time, I will just go through the last two or three slides and read them. Uh, the slides, I believe, will be there in the, um, will be published on the Eclipse Conference website, so you can, uh, you can download them. So I believe you should have a strategy and a plan to implement it. In terms of strategy, definitely put yourself in the shoes of your management. So it, as I said, it's all about the investment, about the money. So think like what would make sense for your management. It would not be to be just to say we have a, a, an open source team. Come up with an open source initiative that makes sense in the long term for the company. So that's why we aligned with the strategic goals that are long-term, that are not like we need to do this project until the end of the year and it makes sense to us. No, we aligned with the strategic goals that the company invests long-term. Uh, because otherwise you risk to start and then need to cut it at some point. Make sure the initiative is aligned with as many uh, as possible from the strategic company goals. What more or less I said, it combines with the long-term. Try to align the initiative with the goals of HR or talent development, sales, operations or delivery, and PR. As you see from the things that I mentioned, we touch different benefits that are tangible or not tangible around the image of the company, around building the talent within the company, around potential business, etc. So try to find ties with as many as possible of those uh, business lines. Start small. In order to make it happen, you need the first step. The first step is usually easier if you start small. So try to sell the idea of starting small. Even don't start officially, even don't want to say, okay, we do it, uh, I said it earlier, don't, we, we didn't want to say, okay, let's agree that we do an ongoing uh, long-term open source initiative. No, we said, let's try for six months and see, see how it goes. 
kind of makes sense, but let's see. Um, don't, okay, measure, report, and discuss progress regularly, strictly, and transparently. You'll be dealing, the decision makers, on whether to continue or not with this thing, you'll be dealing with business people. Business people value transparency and value um, information that they understand. So, based on the goals that you will uh, tie to your initiative, strictly and transparently provide information and discuss progress. Don't hide anything, don't try to exaggerate or something like this. Regard the initiative as long-term from day one and treat it as such. So don't underestimate it. As a plan, first of all, do your analysis based on the strategic points that we just discussed and come up with a rough initial idea. Research and find two, three open source initiatives that might fit and that might be good candidates. Then search for advice from your colleagues. Go and talk to um, sales, to HR, to PR, and ask for their advice, what they think. Just get people, people like to be asked for advice and asked for opinion. Don't propose them, don't ask them to agree uh, or support you, just ask for your advice. You'll get some feedback, then work a little bit on it, then come back and you will see that out of the people, that uh, you will be talking, you will find at least a few supporters. And especially if you did your analysis and your candidates are good. As I said, choosing the, uh, the right open source initiative to get in, in terms of uh, size of community, uh, the type of thing that uh, will, is, is being built, how it ties to, to your goals, etc., is crucial. Follow up with feedback, get, some, uh, get one, two specific ideas, describe them, having in mind also the, the remarks from the, uh, the other colleagues, and then go to uh, your management and decision makers. And the last slide, create an initial plan for kick, kicking off uh, uh, the test phase. Don't go with an idea just, okay, we want to do it. We think that it will make sense because of this and that. What do you think? No, do the next step also. And we think that we could start this way. This guy is the right... Uh, want to mentor those guys. We can start with those two people because they do at home, they are smart home enthusiasts. So think about also about, uh, about the initial phase and make a plan and propose it together to the management. Approach it the management, present the idea and request their advice and their feedback. Work on it, don't be discouraged if, it's, uh, if it is a no-go. Actually, it's more normal to be a no in the beginning but again, that is how also uh, it goes with, uh, with business people. Follow up, refine, improve the plan, and always have in mind the bigger picture because you are discussing with people that care about the bigger picture, the long term. But when the, the dots are connected, believe me, it makes sense and uh, it is more than doable. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Do you have any thoughts or any questions? Or something that doesn't make sense to you or something that you want to oppose to us? No? Four hundred seventy, yes. Mm Yes, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. But the idea in the beginning was just to convince the management that we have to, to do this. And as we are now having a stable progress of the team, now we can, we can say that we need more experienced developers to join and actually to, to contribute more. I agree fully with you. But on the other hand, it's, it's about the, the results also. So. Uh, that, that's why actually we showed what we've achieved and uh, yes, it might take more time by these people or less time by experienced people, but in the end of the day, 
for the open source project, is it important who did it or if it was done? And then on, ju just to finish, Yes, that's in an ideal world when it makes sense to, to everybody to do it. But in general, what we're talking is in the real world. <laughs> right, and we're trying to, to contribute to making it better, not an ideal. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Have a good beer time and see you soon. See you later. Ciao.